somebody's looking. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Paranormal Zone TV. I want to thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We have such a great show. For those of you who may be new to the show, if you would please subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And please don't forget to give the show a like, and I know you're going to love it. So tonight, our topic is Drew Beeson's book, What Happened to the Yuba County Five. This case is a um, mystery as well as a tragedy. Hold on. And um, what, uh, the tragedy of what happened to the five boys in 1978, five friends set out to a basketball game and they never returned. So my guests tonight are Serenity Jenny, Dave Spinks, and Drew Beeson. Let me tell you a little, about, a little bit about each one. Uh, Dave Spinks, he's a researcher, the author of eight books. Hold on for a minute. Okay, hold on. My volume is low. Okay, <clears throat> he's the author of eight books. He's a TV personality. He has been featured on radio, film, and TV, and the owner of World of Weird, and the owner of the most haunted house in America, Willow's Weep. Dave, this Willow's Weep was featured on the History Channel with over 6 million views. Dave is a retired Air Force veteran and a federal law enforcement officer. He has conducted thousands of paranormal investigations throughout Europe and the U.S. After having a creature sighting in West Virginia as a boy and three near-death experiences, Dave was compelled to seek answers. Dave continues to investigate and lecture at conferences around the world. Our next guest is Serenity Jenny. Jen has a master's in education, national certified counselor, licensed professional counselor, and a registered massage therapist. She is an author of the book, Unpoth unpolygenically authentic. Um, she is a psychic medium, ordained minister, and spiritual healer, and celestial shaman. She is Jennifer channels a special type of Hashi healing method, energy medicine channeled directly from the stars with the assistance of ascended masters and angels of the Most High, and the. Be Beings of Light and Galactic Liaison for the council, Councils of Twelve. Um, you can schedule a virtual reading with Jen by calling or texting 724-771-5562. And all this information will be under the uh, video as well. Our next guest is Drew Beeson. Drew is a researcher of true crime and he is the author of five books and of which one of the books we'll be discussing tonight. These books can be purchased on Amazon or you can go to Drew, DrewBeesonBooks.com. He is the host of his own channel, True Crime and Missing People, which is a, a fabulous channel. So with that, let's bring our guests on. Hi, Dave, Jen, and Drew. Thanks so much for joining me tonight on the show. Hey, thanks for having us. Um, Good to be here, Noreen. Oh my, and Drew, uh, Drew wrote this fabulous book. We've done several um, shows on this, but now is the time to find out what happened to the Yuba County Five. Now, Dave and, and uh, 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 Jenny, tell them the different, we're going to use a different format. So Dave, go ahead and tell them what we're going to do tonight. Well, tonight we thought we'd try... Uh, kind of a dual method. We're going to have Jenny do a cold read of the whole case and see what she picks up on. And then Drew and I and Noreen are going to run a ghost box after Jen's done and see if we can get anything to match up with what, with what Jen picked up. Now, Jen doesn't know anything about this case. Um, I know very, I mean, I know little stuff about it, but uh, enough to where I can ask pertinent questions. And of course, Drew wrote the book, so I'm sure he's going to have some exciting questions to ask too. So, and Noreen as well. So, you know, we thought we'd try it this way. And, uh, you know, because we like to get validation on things. And Drew's going to know a lot more information that he can validate that hopefully Jen picks up on. And we get on the uh, ghost box as well. So, I'll, like, when I hear the responses on the ghost box, 
you guys should be able to hear it, but I'll repeat what I think it said. And you guys can also uh, pick up on what you think it said as well. I'll ask a question or Drew will ask a question. We'll wait about five to 15 seconds in between questions and see what we think it said. And then we'll ask another question. Okay. <clears throat> so um, hold on for one second. Uh, how do you want to start now? Jen, since... Jen, go. Okay. Jen, you want to start? So I literally don't know anything and I just started kind of channeling and, and scribbling kind of wait while we are waiting for you to, to come up bring us all online here um, I do know that this I feel very cold I got extremely cold as soon as I tapped into the information so and I do feel like all males were involved and four males are in one position and I see another male in a different position I feel like psychologically or there's a brain issue with one of them I do see him appearing in like what I would say would be military-esque fatigues either involvement in the military or some close association with the military and there feels like there's a, psychologically either a deficit um, or an inability to think or process things I also feel like um, he is a little bit separate from the other people. So the other four, and, and I see them dispersing after, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with their vehicle. I feel like it was stopped intentionally. I feel like there was a ruckus in the vehicle. Um, this man who I feel like the, is the military guy, he's, I don't know if he's older than them or is the eldest one of the bunch he feels like he either lost his mind in the car, created a ruckus in the car, the car was stopped, everybody got out, and I literally heard him say the phrase, and I'm not sure if this is derogatory or not, and I don't mean to, to be offensive, but this is what he's saying. He aped out. He, like, freaked out in the car. Um, I don't feel like there is an issue in the car. I feel like the car stopped and everybody departed the car. Um, and it was frantic. It was a frantic type of departure. And I feel like a, like almost scattered. I don't know if something else was chasing them or he was chasing them. I feel like he um, is having an issue. Uh, and this man, his hair sweeps down to the to the left. I would always say like a like a um, like his part goes off to that side. It's darker hair. He's thinner, he's tall. I probably would say like around 160 to 170 pounds, um, maybe 180. Uh, and, and this is frantic. And when I say frantic, I mean like something is, is they're going to be killed for being in this area. Um, and I feel like one is showing me he ends up in a box of some sort. And I feel like that's the place that he actually died is in a box. Um, and he sat down and is hunched down in the corner of the box uh, it has a door, so I don't know if it's like a storage unit or some sort of like um, small shed maybe. But he's in a box. And then I feel like the man that I, I feel is having a psychological issue, everybody's unable to process what's going on. I feel like it started in the car. It was initiated by something, almost like a switch went off in this man's brain. And he like psychologically became unhinged. I literally see him like, and I know this sounds crazy, but he's changing in my vision. Like he's changing. He's showing me um, he's either on some kind of drug or he has taken drugs before and he's like morphing. When he's saying he's aping out, he's like distorting his physical appearance. Um, I feel like I feel like one man is showing me he can't think. I can't think. I can't, I don't know what to do. I'm panicked. I'm panicked. And I feel like him. I feel like these two are off in one place. They're almost together. I feel like a man runs up to the left. This is in the woods, too, like along a regular road. Like, it's not like it's a, a too far off the beaten path. I mean, it's a main road for that area. I wouldn't say it's like an interstate or anything like that, but it feels like a semi-well-traveled road. Um I also feel like I'm panicked. I'm I'm extremely panicked, and it's freezing. I'm freezing. I'm freezing right now too. Like while I'm in the energy, um, 
I can see the initials GAM or GEM. I can't see the middle letter. Um, he makes me feel like he's pointing to him self telling me he is telling me the story. He's saying it's from my point of view. You're saying, seeing this and saying this from my point of view. And I feel like he is showing me a certain point and he like disappears. He like is gone and I can't see the story. I feel like two, um, males that are together were in some area or some way, shape or form still connected at the time of their passing. Um, two were together and everybody else is separate. The one feels like to me, he's gone off by himself and he's the one that had the psychological, I would say psychotic break, disconnect, completely unhinged. Um, and the other man that is showing me, he's almost like clutching his knees, rocking back and forth. He would see this in a very regressive type of childish behavior, um, psychologically regressing, hiding, scared, um, cannot process, cannot think, cannot make executive function decisions. Like the front part of his brain is not working. Um, nothing makes sense to me on any plane right now. Like this couldn't possibly happen here. This feels like we're in a sci-fi movie plot. It almost feels like it's unbelievable. Um, and I also feel like the one man showing me, see, all the tires work. All the tires work. There's nothing wrong with the car. I keep telling you, there's nothing wrong with their vehicle. It feels like it's a bigger vehicle or a longer vehicle. Um, not a truck, a car. It's a car. Um, it's not a new car. It's a relatively, like, modest-looking car. Um, I'm not really good with cars, so I don't know what type it is. It's long. Um, and I also... F- the front part of my head, I feel like a, there's a huge pressure in my head. Like, this is, no one's able to process this. None of this makes sense on the earth plane. Like, it's literally hard to either comprehend or understand why this is happening. The man that is rocking in the in the box or the shed or where he's showing me, it's dark in there and it's freezing cold. Everything's cold and it's dark. And he literally is hiding to save his life or preserve his life. Um, and it makes me feel like he's hiding from this other man that was in the car. He was in the car with him, and he's hiding from him. Um, this man has a thin face, the one that has the military uh, connection. He has a, a thin, long face. Um, and I can smell trees. I can smell pine. I can smell, like, I can smell the forest. Like, I can smell it's like seared into my my experience of how this is all going on and i honestly feel like somebody's showing me they're hiding either under a bush or can see under a bush i can see something like um foliage in front of me like crouched down it's almost like this perspective is shifting like every every time i go in to read the energy it shifts so i'm going from like first person to second person to third person um and i feel like somebody walked up over a hill like a, the hill is pretty vast and it's almost like they disappeared off the hill like they're just gone um i don't know where he went like i'm trying to look in in from his perspective to see where he went he's just gone another man makes me feel like oh this is terrible to even say my back feels like someone like took their hand around my spinal cord and either yanked it down or pulled it out um I feel like the ripping or tearing of, of a body too. Um, and I feel like one man, there's a man named Jim who said he was sorry to his dad. He said he was sorry to his father. Um, not sure why, but he said he was sorry. Uh, this man tells me he can't even, he doesn't have words a lot of times or can't speak. Uh, didn't what is not able to, to talk well to begin with, but he wants to tell his daddy sorry. Um, and another one was just telling me about chocolate milk and donuts. Like he was like, we were just getting F and chocolate, chocolate milk and donuts. See, he showed me his chocolate milk and donuts. Um, it was innocent and it was quick. It was a quick departure from what was happening, traveling in a vehicle. Um, things are copacetic and then it's like someone switch just goes off and it's the man in the back seat on the right hand side that feels like he just like went ballistic 
And when I say ballistic, like morphed into like a different kind of being, he's telling me psychologically he is not in his body, not in the state of mind he should be. Um, there's a lot. It's it's all it's very difficult to read five different perspectives or four different perspectives. I feel like I I don't, I'm not really tapped into one like all. Do you you want me to start? I don't know. I just heard somebody talk. No. It froze for a second. Keep going. It's great. Okay. So I was scribbling too. Um, I feel like it was like there's like an X. So. I almost feel like there's a crossroads where I'm looking at, like I'm looking down on top of a crossroads, um, miles away from something else, like miles and miles and miles. Like I can't see anything else, like not homes, not anything, like nothing close to me. Um, I feel like this, this is smack in the middle of like nowhere. Like I just feel like I'm, it's desolate. Um, I just keep having the flash of the man in the in this container type thing. It looks like a in my perspective. He's showing me. He just is sitting there rocking, and he's like scared to come out. Doesn't want to come out. Um, showing me. I may. I do think that maybe is where he actually expired. Like he stayed in there. He was scared to death. Like it's, he's telling me he's scared to death. Like he's not coming out of there. Like he will get killed if he comes out of there. Um, and I I feel like. I feel like this man morphed into like a creature. I know that that sounds a little bit crazy and like off the rails, but when he's telling me he ate that, his psychological functioning as a human being is non existent at this point. Um, he's like animalistic, almost like uh, chasing them or, or hurting them. This, this problem started inside the car. It started inside the car. I feel three different perspectives saying all the same. This started in the car and it was a shame and one man is showing me he prayed he prayed he prayed he prayed he prayed over and over and over again two are together one is showing me the perspective um in the box like looking out of the box i would say like um shed i gotta quit saying box but that's who he's showing me he's showing me it's like a structure or some sort of container and then the other male and I almost feel like he has like uh, jeans and a sweatshirt on. He's showing me he's close to proximity of like not too far from the vehicle. I know it's a lot. Um, I definitely want to say too, like I felt very um, my heart hurt for the for this this man's dad. The two that were together this man's dad he's very sorry to his dad it's important that i say that um it's just really important uh and i feel like the dad has passed away as well but he was sorry because dad feels like he's there with them now was not then um no one knows what happened there he said no one knows no one ever knew what happened and there are not four or one place, and I don't know where the other one went. He just like disappeared, and I and I know that this sounds like, but he keeps showing me like military fatigue, psychological dysfunction, almost to the point where he either was on drugs or takes drugs or takes drugs to keep that from happening, um, and didn't, and lost his mind, and they literally were afraid for their life. Two of those are like. Uh, expiration happened outside the vehicle one expired in like a in that building structure container um and one is like disappeared like off the planet i know that sounds a little crazy but i feel like he is not accessible and then i do feel like he died later not there not there i feel like he died at a later date and i honestly feel like he may have killed himself or taken his own life there seems like there's a uh i'm sorry he mutilated himself not not shot himself or anything he, he mutilated himself with a, a sharp object mm. that's how, how he passed and he did not pass at that that same place he passed somewhere else later in the years 
Hmm. Is that enough? <laughs> uh, you want more? Drew, what do you think? Yeah, that's that's a lot. Um, I'm still cold, and I can I cannot for the life of me get. Usually, I can shut it off and get back into my own physical, but I'm freezing. So if you see me cover up with a blanket, you'll know why. <laughs> Very cold. Yeah, it's so hard to not ask any questions right now. Um, mm-hmm. Drew, what, uh, what, what do you want us to do? Because all we have now are, are questions. Um, um, Jen, did you want you... to do the box? Well, you can. Um, you can um, actually. You can go ahead and say what you know that Jen hit on, if you want, right now. Yeah, go ahead, okay. uh, Drew. Okay, I mean, I'm assuming people already know the background somewhat, but uh, five guys went missing February 24th, 1978. Four had cognitive disabilities, one had schizophrenia. Uh, They were last seen after a basketball game in Chico, California, watching their favorite team play. They went to get some snacks after that game at a place called Bears Market. Uh, They were never seen again after that. They never came home. They were supposed to play in a real important uh, Special Olympics game that following morning and of course they never made it back there they were found way up in the Plumas National Forest it's very very cold uh, the car was abandoned uh, 1969 Mercury Montego so the cars are correct it's a long car it was older American car very heavy uh, the car was abandoned there the uh, car was found uh, two or, you know, about three days later after the, the boys were they were called the boys is an affectionate term for them car was reported missing the car was found the following monday evening and uh there was no trace of them after finding the car the car had gas in it it looked like it had just been stuck in the snow line where uh five really athletic basketball players which they were they played on a team called the gateway gators they could have easily got the car unstuck um so the big search is on. They can't find the boys at all until early June. The, the, the snow uh, starts to melt, and they find them in a remote Forest Service trailer. So when she's talking about a box, it's a, actually a Forest Service trailer. There were two in the middle of nowhere near a place called Bucks Lake. At the exact uh, location it was called the Granite Basin Fire Camp near the Daniels Inn campground, very high up in the Plumas National Forest at a high elevation, very cold. Uh, they found the body of one of the boys. His name was Ted Weirds. The oldest of the group was in that Forest Service trailer, literally frozen to death. I uh, was missing some of his toes from a heavy frostbite. But they ascertained somebody had been taking care of Ted for uh, about eight to ten weeks based on his beard growth. Uh, so he was the first one discovered of these guys. And then the following days after that, they found uh, three more of them, uh, Jack Madruga, Jim Sterling, and... Um, Jackie Hewitt's remains were found not far from the trailer, about two to three miles. Two were together like uh, Serenity hit on when they passed away. We know that. Uh, they never found Gary Mathias, and that's who uh, she's hitting on, talking about uh, psychological problems because Gary had schizophrenia. He was not like the other four boys. And uh, he was on met- antipsychotic medication for that uh, disorder. But by all reports, he was pretty stable on his medicine. Uh, going into this disappearance from what we know. Uh, But that's definitely the one that's different. He was in the Army, so he would be wearing uh, military fatigues. Uh, He wasn't wearing them then, but he would have worn them in the past. Uh, The driver of the car was Jack Madriga. He had been on the Army as well. But uh, Gary was the survivor of the group. group. So uh, it's interesting that she said that uh, Gary would have died later in the year because there was a sighting of Gary. There's multiple sightings of Gary after that June uh, there was few around Yuba City, but most notably from uh, Jack Madruga's niece uh, felt for sure that she saw Gary Mathias at a, a bar that her parents owned. Uh, so it's interesting that she said that, that Gary would have passed away later in the year because that's definitely who she's describing as Gary. Uh, and something happening in the car going up that road called the uh, Oracle Quincy Highway. Uh, really cold, dark, desolate road out up into the, the Plumas National Forest. And no one really knows why they were so off course, but that is uh, you know one of the theories out there that, that people think that maybe Gary had a flare up or something else happened to cause him to come under stress, and uh, that's how they wound up so off course and lost. 
Jen, do you feel that there was any foul play? Um, I feel like the man in the vehicle, I don't think he was in his right mind. It makes me feel like there's a disconnect, like there's a psychotic break. Um, I feel like there was an attack of some sort and they were scared. Um, I don't feel like they either were able to not comprehend, like they're not sure what is going, like what is happening. Um, it feels like tons of confusion. So I feel like if somebody was at fault, it would be the man in the car is what my gut feeling is. Like he was the perpetrator of the chaos that ensued. Um, that's what it, it felt like. So it felt like, and it does feel like there's psychological damage from the, the fatigues is what he's telling me. Like he had been psychologically altered is the word he's telling me. He was altered. So do you, is it with your remote viewing, they leave the basketball game, they get in the car, they stop at a place to get some snacks and whatever, and then they continue to drive, but then they go off the main road, they go off of a Quincy Highway or some way, huh, Drew? Yeah. And then from uh -huh. there, they end up on the mountain. What happened yep. in the car to make them go off and up into the mountain? I think that that the perpetrator, the tall, skinny guy that has the, the, the military, the psychological issues in the military, I feel like there was a threat to, to these gentlemen from inside the car I do not think that um, it was too far of a stretch to like they were led astray because they were threatened. They were they were threatened. And I feel like this man had two distinct sides and schizophrenia. I mean, if that's truly what he had, and that was an accurate diagnosis, this explains. I feel like there's two separate um, people in him. He like literally said me to me the phrase he aped out. I'm not sure what that means. Um, I'm assuming that means snapped. He snapped. Um, and he was, he was, is making me feel he was the problem. He was the problem in the car. So the, um, and there was scuffle and chaos in the car, confusion. Um, I specifically see a chocolate milk container and white powder donuts. Very specific. Uh, yeah, stuff just, flying in the car. Not sure if there was stuff left in the car, but everybody departs the car and is like running for their lives. Well, from from this man, they're running from this man. So he goes berserk, but and they were afraid of him then because they were mm -hmm. afraid of him. He was he going to do any harm to them? Yes. Yes. There was harm happening in the car. It feels like there was a free for all in the car. Um, you know, I had read that Gary Mathias, he, he's the military guy, right, uh, Drew? Right. Okay. Uh -huh. I, I had Mark. read that he had a reoccurring dream that he and several other people would disappear. Mm hmm. That's, That's what true. I. Was there any weapons found in the car or in the. Around the bodies, no weapons. So I'm thinking, okay, there's four of them and one of him. They could have overpowered him pretty easily. Oh yeah, and he had a more dominant personality for sure. I don't think they could process. I feel like they're like shook. Like this is not happening. Oh my god! Like what is happening? I don't think they were prepared to deal with an issue from within their own group, if that makes sense. Cognitively, I don't think they could process really what was happening. So when they, well, they got stuck in the snow, which they could have all pushed the car out, and they get out of the car, and they they go their different ways. Were two of them together when they, when they dispersed from the car? The two of them were together. They, when, they, I, when their bodies were found. Oh, did... So, what happened? Did they all go a separate way then when they ran out of the car? Two went, one went to the left. Is I mean, I'm looking at it like two went this way to the left, and and the, I don't know where the the um, from the view of like that box structure, or that container, or whatever I'm looking at. 
Um, that man, it almost looks like one went left directly, one went over the hill, like probably to my 10 o'clock. If my 12 o'clock was straight in front of me, it would be to my 10 o'clock um, north. That's why I was wondering if there's a weapon involved, because why would you take off running in a different direction unless you're being threatened with a weapon of some sort? I think this man looked like a monster. I'm not kidding. When he said he aped out, in my mind's eye, like, he has come unglued and is, like, psychotic. Like, like has not a, a, a human quality to him anymore. He literally looks like he's, like, morphed into something. So one of them was found in a, um, a ranger's trailer. Uh, and um, and there was they were able to get heat and there was food canned food were they army rations Drew or just canned type of canned food yeah they were they were army C rations and, and they ate very little of the food yeah and they didn't even attempt to have any heat who it was uh, let's see they found it was Ted Weir was yep. anybody else in that trailer with that Ted? You're asking me this? Yeah. I think initially there was no one for a few days at least. And then I feel like, and I know this sounds a little crazy, but there either was a feral person or it was a creature of some sort. I, I just see a lot of hair. And I see, like, we're talking remote. It looks to me like there's nothing around this, whatever this little space is that he's in, this trailer or can or container. Keep telling me it's a container. It's very, it's small. So someone tried to help him. And when I say they can't think and they were scared to death, they are not making decisions like, let's say you or I would make. It feels like they can't process things properly. Hmm. For them not to use, let's think common sense wise here. If they're not using any heat and they have access to heat or eating the food, they must have been scared out of their wits. Not to be able to go outside and turn the heat on or whatever they had to do to do it. So that's that's kind of weird. I think there was only one in that trailer. It was looks to me like there's just one physical person in there from that vehicle. Okay, now, hey, Drew, didn't they find um, Gary's shoes in that trailer? Yes, his tennis shoes. Yeah, Gary's tennis shoes were found. Ted's, Ted Weir, his body was found on there laying on a bed with eight bed sheets pulled up to his neck. Must have been in a lot of pain because he uh, had severe frostbite. Some of his toes were already missing. Uh, his shoes were removed and they were gone from the trailer. So it's surmised that uh, Gary took off his tennis shoes and swapped out for Ted's heavier leather shoes and at some point headed out into the uh, wilderness and never to be seen again. How far was the trailer from the car, Drew? Uh, it was about, uh, as the crow flies, it was about 5.6 miles, but around the road, they would have the path they would have gone was closer to about 12 miles. Oh, yeah, so that in, in heavy snow, yeah, they're going to have frostbite and everything else. Drew, what about that fellow by the name of Joseph Schoon? What's the story with him? He was the uh, only known witness that may have been the last person that ever saw the boys that evening at uh, Rogers Cow Camp. Joe Schoon was at a bar called the Mountain House about uh, seven miles from where the car was found and he left the bar sometime that afternoon on February 24th after having a few beers there at Mountain House. He drove his uh, Volkswagen Beetle up the Orville Quincy Highway to go check the snow line as per his own story. He uh, came up and got to the snow line and then his Volkswagen Beetle got stuck in the snow very close to uh, Jack's Mercury Montego with the boys were traveling in. Uh, Mr. Jones got out of the Volkswagen to try to get it unstuck and in the process he suffers a mild heart attack. He uh, gets back in the car for heat and uh, at some point he uh, go, falls asleep and he's awakened sometimes around midnight and he sees flashlight beams behind him 
and uh, he gets out of the car and he asks for help. He sees what he thought was uh, five men and possibly a woman holding a baby, uh, and he's calling for help, but they won't come to his rescue, so he's very frustrated by that. Uh, he gets back into the car and uh, makes it till about four in the morning and it suddenly realizes that no one's going to come to his aid, and he winds up walking seven miles back down that road to the mountain house where he started over a, a six hour period making that long walk taking several breaks along the way laying down to to get more energy after having the heart attack he did walk past the mercury and he thought about getting the story kind of changed quite a bit uh one story is he looked in the window and didn't see anything but the the carton of milk and, some, and the snacks the boys had uh in another version he got in the car for a little while <laughs> So his story changed quite a bit, but he makes it back to the mountain house. He gets a ride home. His wife later, later returns home to where he lived, not far from there. And uh, later that evening, took him to the hospital. Oh, so that's from here on the milk, too. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay, so another question. If, if Gary didn't die there on the mountain, he died somewhere else, on regular on the land um what about a month later or so drew do they think uh no we no one knows no one knows Gary, so Gary how do they know he's dead found. then how do they know he's dead well it's just assumed he's dead no one knows he could be alive and homeless somewhere or or we don't know he wouldn't he have a he would have i'm sure had identification on him because he had a driver's license so no matter where they find him, he has an ID on him. But isn't that kind of strange that nobody has, um, if he is deceased, that nobody's, I'm sure they would have tried to contact his family if he has any. Uh, yeah, he does. When people get hypothermic, they sometimes strip all their clothes off because they go insane as well. Sure. So that was a possibility as well. Hmm. So you want to run a ghost box for a bit or what? Well, hold on. Somebody has a question. Ask Jen if she's one of them. Oh, yeah. Okay. We just talked about that, Renee. Yeah. The, uh, Renee wanted to know one of them haven't been found. And, and, and you see, you, do you see him possibly anywhere, Jen? No, he's dead. He's showing me he died later. Oh. And then he he feels like he did not die. I don't not feel like he died of hypothermia or outside. I feel like he died from like a um, very sharp object. And I feel like he either mutilated himself or killed himself with a sharp object. Oh, you don't think anybody else killed him? No. He killed himself. I think psychologically he was extremely disturbed. I feel like... I think Drew said he was on medication, but I, this man doesn't feel like he acted like a human being. He feels like he, like, when he's saying he ate out, the feeling that I get in his body is, like, um, pure adrenaline, almost like he was altered. He keeps telling me he was altered. He was changed. Um, I don't know if this was because of his military experience, but he makes me feel like there's a disconnect in there. Um, I think it was already existing, but it got extremely exacerbated um, throughout this. It was a short military experience. Um, not a, He was either not appropriate or did not act appropriate during that stint as well. Uh, he just, he just showed me he's like a monster. He's like a mon he's like a, a regular man, and then he freaks out, and he's a monster, and he cannot control himself. So if he and he is oh, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. He is dead. He is definitely de he's deceased and then, now. Did not die at that scene though. D is can you? Is there anything that you can pick up from him where he he killed himself at? And if anybody found him. I do not think he was ever identified, so I'm not sure if anybody found him. He said he's not identified. Um, he does make me feel like 
uh, he reintegrated it into society or like tried to re-enter society unmedicated that did not work and stayed in some outskirts of some smaller town. It looks like I'm trying to see like anything that I is like designating or he could tell me where he was. Mm -hmm. Oh, he literally did not. He didn't have any touch with reality, completely psychotic break. I feel like that was it. He like could not, that was what he was telling me. He could not reintegrate with society. Like he couldn't, I don't know anything about his military experiences, but I feel like there was some sort of either, um, he's telling me it was experimental. It was experimental and he couldn't function after that. He just couldn't function heavily medicated at his own hand too. So he also took drugs. He was on medicine, but he also took drugs. Couldn't fix it. Hmm. Couldn't fix himself. Maybe he's part of MK Ultra. <laughs> is not able to participate in society, couldn't do it. Wow. Drew, can you come up with anything else for her? Not right now. Let's, let's see what we can get on the spirit box it would be really interesting and uh, who might show up. All right. You ready, Maureen? Yeah, go ahead. All right, let me turn this on and see if it sounds okay. Okay. Not. All right, what I'm going to be using is um, my favorite ghost box, the old timey hat check. This one seems to work the best for me. All right, so I'll, what I'll do is I'll have the sound down real low when I ask a question and I'll turn it on up loud so we can hear it. Can you, can you guys hear this? Check, check. Yeah. Hold on. Can you hear that okay? Uh, okay. Can you hear that, Drew? Mm hmm Okay. Okay. Yes. Any spirits that want to communicate with us, feel free to use this box's energy, only the box's energy, please. Do not use my energy or Drew's or Noreen's. Uh, you can send Jen messages psychically if you want, but you can't use her energy either. Um, we are trying to communicate with the Yuba 5 gentleman that came up missing. So if you guys want to come through and give us any messages, we are glad to receive them. So, Drew, you want to start off? You have questions or you want me to start off? You can start off. Okay. Any spirits want to communicate from the Yuba 5? Can you please tell me one of your names now, please, on the box? Please. 
Can you just set up loud and clear, please? It had to happen. I need to, did you say Matt? You said Matt, say yes. I don't know the names, Drew, so you have to fill me in. I knew the Gary one, that was it. Dude. I couldn't make out what he was trying to say. Maybe Jackie. Up the five. I just said no on the box and Matt, too. Dave. Is there anyone named Matt in the Uba Five, Drew? No. No, okay. D David's. Right, it's David's. What does the spirit have to do with the Yuba 5? What? The, can I tell you something? What? The names are Ted, uh, Gary, Jack, and Jackie. Is, that, is there one more? Jim. There's a Jack and a, and a Jackie. Jack? And Jim. And, oh, there was a Jim? Yes. What's Jim's last Come name? Jim. Uh, Jim. J I M. Okay. Are there any spirits here from the boys of the Yuba Five? If yes, say your name, please. Yes, the five. It said the five. Was there any was there anything supernatural that went on during these boys coming up missing? Yes or no? something yes or no okay you said they said yes was it a man or was it something paranormal that was weird it said devil <laughs> was one of the boys possessed yes or no sort of military experiment, yes or no? Say it louder, please. I couldn't hear you. I heard you say yes, but you need to say it louder. Was he part of a military experiment, yes or no? story you got a lot of ears listening to you right now get that story out now's the time fighting did the boys get into a 
fight in the car, yes or no? There's some kind of ruckus in the car, yes or no, please? Real quick, yeah. Like someone said, yeah, from far off. What happened in the car? responses there so we'll let um drew go ahead and ask some questions now and see what he can get you ready drew mm -hmm. all right go ahead whenever you're ready how many made it to the trailer just one or was there two or was there more Okay, great for another question. 
Did did you take Ted's shoes and leave your own shoes? Joseph Schoen's involved in any way with uh, the disappearance of the boys. Drew, mm-hmm. do you know anything personal about Gary that you could ask that uh, we can prove that it is Gary that Dave is communicating with? Sure. Gary, what was the name of the, the rock band you were in that you were a singer for? heard that. Family wow. said something on. It's yeah. almost sounded like, yeah. like right on. Yeah, I heard that. I'll, I'll find out. So, of course. I just said. Did you have a girlfriend at the time of the disappearance? Yes. Yes. What was her name? I think he said, he said it sounded like Beth. I wasn't sure though. That's the one. Yeah. I don't know if there's any truth to that, but... Oh, it just said no witness and then safe. before the disappearance.
He said, there's a full sentence that said, can't fuck with it. Hmm. So, just to give the listeners a little tip right there. So, on a, on the radio, to show you that these ghost boxes do work, right? On, on a regular radio station, you cannot say any cuss words like that. Or you will be severely fined or even shut down. Like about tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars because it's against FCC regulations. So when you hear cuss words like MF or F or whatever the case, they're not allowed to say that on the radio, okay? I just woman, it, did, it sounded like a guy said, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I like to joke on here sometimes, too. Yeah. Who just said hi to us? Three. Three who? Give me your names. Gary, if you're on there still, what's your last name? going to harm one of the boys if he was able to catch them. Who? Ask Gary if he had intentions of hurting one of the boys. You ask him. Oh no, you, <laughs> you ask him, Dave. Go ahead. Alright. Gary, did you have intentions of hurting one of the other four boys, yes or no? That's what I heard. That's exactly what I heard. Gary, did you want to kill all the other boys? Yes or no? Thought so. So you thought about it. Possibility. It was a possibility. Why? Kill them. <laughs> 
You know that? Oh, yeah. Uh, ask him. Ask him why he became friends with the four boys. What? What was the why? Why, uh, Gary? Why did you befriend the four boys? have a question from uh, the cat da da uh, daddy Steve wants to know ask him is he in a good place right now Yeah, I want to ask Drew. Uh, Drew, uh, Gary, um, was he a part of that basketball team or he was just going along for the ride? He's part of the team. Oh, he was? Oh, okay. That's why I asked him what was his favorite sport. I was trying to get him to say it. Is he in contact with the other boys where he is now? I want to see if the other boys are there with him. Okay, yeah. Gary, are the other boys there with you now? I heard no and then some. So which ones are there with you now? Oh, it's a 
said something about milk. Mm. Was the fight over milk? Mm. What kind of car was it that you guys were in? What are you saying? Another question? Anybody got Here. a question? What was the name of your father? Mm, good one. Make sure if you hear it, you let everybody know, Drew. It did? Uh, that, um, who is the one that Jen was talking about that was real sorry, uh, apologetic to his daddy? Said Jack. Said Jack. Oh. There's two Jacks. Which Jack? Um, Drew, they were f uh, friends. Gary came in at a la the four were friends to start with. Then when did Gary come in as as part of this group? He came in later. You know the little, you know the year before they went missing to, to uh, help them teach them basketball better and be part of the team. Oh, okay. Special Olympics, yes or no? At one point? Yeah, it's I heard one that. Point. At one point. At one point. I just said something about fire. Said fire. Did, did you establish that Gary was in the trailer with um, Ted? Was that, that I, I was doing something. Was that established that Gary was in the trailer with Ted? Can I ask him? Gary, was Ted in the trailer with you, yes or no? Well, if, if Gary was in the trailer with Ted, 
he was in the military, right? Why didn't he? I'm sure they use. Don't those military guys usually carry those knif- special knives? They usually carry them in their pocket where you could open up uh, those military rations, the cans of food. And also, why didn't he? Uh, I'm sure he knew how to turn on the heat. There was, what, propane tanks or something outside? Why didn't they turn on the heat? Yeah, that's what, that's what I don't understand. You want to ask him why they didn't turn any heat on? Yeah, go ahead. Why didn't you guys turn the heat on that was available to you in the trailer? Did uh, that trailer then, did they have any lighting in that trailer or were they in the dark? Did you guys have lights in the trailer? Yes or no? Did you have lights in the trailer? Yes or no? He said they cut it. Did then someone cut the power? No power. So so they're in this trailer. There was there a full moon out there that night? Was there a, a full, full moon, moon that, out there night. that night? Yeah. So when the boys ran from the car and they scattered, it, there was so there was a full moon, so they could probably and with the brightness of the snow, they could see, I guess where they were going. So there was a, there was no lights in the trailer. There was a full moon, but um, and they couldn't, and it was dark in the trailer. So how were they even able to find the food? And supposedly they ate some food, but there was plenty of food for them to live on in that trailer. Yeah, I mean, but they didn't have to have food that night. They could have survived no, two or no, three but, days without food. So, it, I don't know, it sounds to me like Gary was there with him, the kid was freezing, uh, and Gary left him, left him to die. He wanted to kill them anyway, so I think Gary just left him to die, not to help him out. And Gary probably ate the food. I bet he didn't give Ted any of it. Or he killed Ted and took his shoes and dropped through the snow. Um, I don't know. They did an autopsy on him, didn't they, Drew? I don't know what the autopsy, if they found anything. Ted starved to death. Yeah, so that's what I'm thinking. That's bizarre, but wasn't there food found in the trailer? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Gary probably ate the food and and didn't give anything to Ted. He might have suffocated Ted somehow. Or he just froze, and they thought he froze to death. Gary, did you kill Ted, yes or no? Clear your conscience and tell us 
the truth of what happened. Did you kill Ted, yes or no? Accident. Really? Hmm. So did you have a freak out and kill Ted on accident? Is that what happened? something to that effect where they, one of them freaked out maybe killed one they all the other ones ran and they died of exposure or something like that yeah I think yeah they did they died from the elements any more questions any yeah more questions? Um, d does Gary know if the boys uh, forgive him Wow. Ted, 
If you're here, how old were you when he died? still here. Jen, are you picking up anything of any of them being here with us still? I do. Um, I felt like Ted's voice was pretty consistent over there. Um, I felt like Gary left for a bit, but I do feel like he's back now just since you talked to him. He did leave for a little bit. Can I, I have a question? If if there was a there was moonlight that night, they were able to see where they were going. Why didn't they? Were they able to? I know they they ran, but were they were they lost once they ran, or were they able to see the car or know how they could get back to the car? One of them had a driver's license beside Gary. That other person could have gathered the other boys of what he could and gone in, gone to the car and taken off, gone for help. It was it Gary's car? Uh, it was Gary, yeah, it was Gary's yeah. car, yeah. He had the, what if he had the keys? Uh, did they find the keys in the car? No. Oh, they didn't. They found them on, with Jack. Oh, God. Okay, well, wait Jack a minute. Charge. Was, was Jack had the car keys? Okay, who had, uh, was it Jack that had the driver's license, Drew? Jack and Gary had driver's license. Okay, so Jack, they found the keys on Jack. Then why couldn't Jack have gone back oh, to Jack the car? Was, they found him with his remains. Yeah, why didn't he go back to the car? Try and get one. Too far. They, <laughs> he, just said too they, far. he just said too far on the box. Oh, it was too far. So I'm, you know, just using my brain. They all take off running in the, in the woods, different directions, whatever. They get lost. They're freezing. Yeah. By this time, they're hoping they find um, help or a way out before they're going to go ahead and backtrack all the way back, you know. Right, right. Found him. Who can find him? Just, you know, I'm just guesstimating what, what what I'm thinking in my head or seeing in my head what could have transpired there. Was there weather? I, I do think it was windy and like blizzardy conditions. I feel like it was very tough to get bearing. Do you know anything about the weather? Was the snow pretty deep, Drew? Oh, yeah, really deep. Three to six feet snow drill. Yeah, yeah. cold. Was it I feel like it was bl like blowing like almost to the point where it was like you couldn't navigate. Said yeah. Yeah. So if you're trying to navigate through that kind of deep snow, there's no way you're gonna try to backtrack. And by that point, you're probably froze to death. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It was too far. Had to be Just some kind of struggle for Jack to end up with the car keys, like Jen was saying. Something had to take place. There was a fight. There was a struggle. Something went down for that. For that to happen. Wasn't uh, Gary um, um, really meticulous with his car, and he would he worried? Jack was. Oh, it was Jack. Oh, okay. So it was Gary. 
Gary's car, but Jack ended up with the keys on his body when they found it, right? Yeah, it was Jack, Jack's car is Jack's keys. Jack, or, oh, okay, yeah. so he had the keys to the car. He wouldn't let anyone drive it but him. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure Gary caused the ruckus in the car, and they all just, like, blew out of the car because he was, like, freaking out. Like, they were afraid of him. Oh, that was creepy. It said weather, and then a guy just cried out, help. Oh, it said, man. help. Who needs help? We're only speaking to the Yuba 5 now, spirit. Who just cried out for help on the box? Gary. Hmm, I thought it was Gary. Did Gary have a mental breakdown?
physicians considered him to be one of our sterling success cases. Really? <laughs> um, Ren Renee wants to know. Uh, you find all that to be true, and uh, you ver verified that Drew in the book, or? Mm hmm. That is true. Yeah. All right, Renee wants to know if there was a reason why he went nuts in in the car. Was there a fight over, like you said, milk? Was there a fight over something they weren't sharing? Why all of a sudden they were they they drove up fine. They drove up fine to get to the game. It was on the way back. So can you pick up what happened? Why they were fighting? Yeah, we can ask again. We okay. already asked it once. Let's try it again. Speaking to any of the Yuba Five in the spirits of the Yuba Five, if you're here, yeah, Gary. What caused the fight or the ruckus in the car? I did. What happened? What caused you to freak out? But they're not saying what Gary did to cause the fight. What did Gary do to cause all of this? Sound like he said he wigged out. That's what it sounds like. Did Gary wig out? Is that what you just said? You were what? He said I was something. I killed. Jerry, did you attack the other boys, yes or no? All the time. What made you mad, Gary? What set you off? Someone picking on you, making fun of you. Wait a minute. What was the cause of you going off, Gary? Really? 
Yeah. Of course I'm. Is he by himself? Are you by yourself, Gary? Uh, no, said with others. Said with others. Are you with the other four boys right now? Yeah, now. Really? Any questions? No, I think there are responses there. Mm -hmm. And of course, it, it always is better too when you play it back and listen again yeah. later. You can hear even more stuff. Yeah. Yeah, let them know that this is a mystery. Nobody knows what happened to them, why they <clears throat> ended up in the mountain instead of staying on their road uh, to go home. That's, a question we, that's one yeah. question we didn't ask if they were drinking or anything. And it was so long before they found the bodies, they wouldn't be able to tell if they had any drink in them or anything. Were you guys drinking at all during all this? Were you using drugs of any kind? Hmm, that's weird. Was there any kind of alcohol involved? Oh, well, not really nothing there on that. Wow. Well, we appreciate you communicating. Any more questions, guys, before we shut the box off? No. No, I, no, 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 I'm, I'm just really. One more question from the chat if there is any. Oh, let's see. Uh, anybody have a question in the chat room? Dave froze. 
He froze. The snow, three to six feet of snow is no joke to try to walk through. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then the hyper clothes. Yeah. And they had no winter clothes. They had light oh. jackets to that, right? So it's pretty, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm just really it's glad. Just, I'm just really glad we found out the mystery. I mean, this all be, this all makes sense. I would, really, I would be curious as to um, Gary's military, like what unit he was in, and what, um, like, what testing was done to him. If if there's anything known um, to determine what happened to him, because it feels like he was it was significant. Did you look up his military records at all, Drew? Because that's public I mean, information. Yeah, I mean, he was in the army. Um, and I but think he was able to find uh, illicit drugs in the army because there was other guys there that would get drugs, yeah. you know, illegal illegal drugs in Germany. Yeah. Yeah, it's very easy to go to Amsterdam and all of that from there. Uh, I know because I was over in Germany. I've seen it all over there, man. You can get all, anything you want. He found some uh, hardcore drugs over there that some other guys were turning them on to, and that mixed with his schizophrenia really made him lose his mind. And it seems like, I don't know, I mean, it's just my feeling, and you guys can chime in on here that it differs or it's the same. It seemed like everything led back to Gary to me. Yeah. You know, everything yeah. seemed to be Gary was the catalyst some way, somehow. Yeah. Good responses on there. I mean, we got his name numerous times. We got stuff that pertained to that situation and everything else. So, well, with that reoccurring dream he's had, and I don't know how many years that was going on, it was like a premonition as to what what happened. So he obviously reported that to people, right? Uh, his he told or he, family or whoever. yeah, he did. He told. He knew him. about it. Yeah, that's why he got medically so, discharged. So if Gary's having dreams like that, chances are he probably is a little bit more psychic than the average bear. So, I mean, it's not too far-fetched to, to think maybe he had some kind of possession and or attachment with the psychotic break that he did have. Yeah. And what do we know, what do we talk about, Jen, all the time with people that have abilities and they get misdiagnosed and they're given all these extra drugs that they don't need you know um and you know we know people that do have abilities sometimes do have um various um diagnoses of different things that and they just want to fill you full of pills basically or give you these drugs because they don't want to deal with the uh, actual situation that's going on with that person he was saying the word altered and I, well he was saying alter and i thought he meant altered from drugs he could have possibly been referring to an alter, like an alter ego, like an alter, like somebody would have like dissociative like identity disorder. Yeah, like it would be an alter personality. So, you know, that could mean two different things. Interesting stuff. Yeah, that was great. That was really great. Thanks so much. Um, yeah. You guys. Now, now I want to go read about what the heck actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> Buy Drew's well, book. <laughs> get Drew's book. I highly recommend this book. I, I was going to write new book. Where can we get that? <laughs> book? This is my friend's new book. This is the Bible on the case now. My friend Tony Wright's new book. Oh, uh, cool. Things aren't right on Amazon. Yeah, it's my friend's book, but it's uh, just came out a few weeks ago. It's great. Awesome. I'd like to see. Well, yeah, I felt and read and how it compares. Mine's on there too. Can't miss it. Just type in Yuba County Five. Uh, both of them will pop up. Yeah, no. Jen's got a book. <clears throat> I've got several. Well, your book, Jenny. Drew. Now you can tell your friends. <laughs> you can tell your <laughs> yeah. friends about. Tell them to listen to this show. Yeah, absolutely. He will. That's awesome. So. Uh, that was good. What else you got, Noreen? Oh God, no, no other cases tonight. But I do have some other cases. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours. <laughs> I do have some other cases. There's a Summer Wells. 
uh, who disappeared up by the Appalachian Trail. That's where the family lived. But there's more to this case than meets the eye. That's one. Then uh, Dennis Martin, also up in the Appalachian Trail. And I know uh, Drew has some. Yeah, Drew has some cases too. I don't have anything scheduled for the next two months for you guys, so um, I have forgotten. You know, I was trying to get guests and trying to fill the spots, and then I forgot about us. I forgot, and this is going to kill me. I can't change anybody now um, unless we fit in an extra show. I'll have to get with you on that. Because uh, I know the viewers, this is, I mean, this is my all-time favorite kind of show. This is, this is, this is, this is my favorite. I mean, I would do this every week, every, every other week. This is all I care about, really. Um, I'm not really into dog man. Oh, sorry, Dave. <laughs> sorry, I take that back. <laughs> We've got a lot of cool stuff upcoming, and in case you guys are interested, um, Jen and I are doing a, a thing we call ethereal excursions now where we take people to haunted locations with us. We've been doing it for two years, but we now officially gave it a name. Um, Jen does a cold, takes people through the location, does a cold read with them, and then they can investigate with me and we do all kinds of fun stuff uh, at various locations around the country. So um, if you look at our ethereal excursion pages on Facebook, you'll see upcoming locations we have planned and we're always adding more. 2025, we're actually doing an unexplained cruise with Norwegian Cruise Lines up the East Coast from New York City all the way to Nova Scotia. We're taking folks to the Titanic uh, burial ground where all those ones that died, they got the that they did recover bodies that they buried. We're taking them there and doing a ghost hunt with them oh. and then several other excursions during the trip. And each night it'll be uh, one of us speaking on the ship. Uh, it'll be me, Jen, Eric Altman, and uh, Ron Murphy. Um, so you can get on our pages and look for how to book that cruise if you... Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, man. It's going wow, to be awesome. So, that's crazy. Um, we've already booked numerous people on this for 2025. So the cool thing is with that, too, you can just put a down payment. You don't have to pay it all at once and pay as you go. So you got a whole year, more than a year to pay it off. So they should out. all come with us and we can talk about all these things up on the promenade deck, deck right? Like on the top yeah, of the Yeah, and we're doing a gallery reading one of the nights, too, and doing other readings for folks on the ship. And then we're going to go to do some haunted locations, talk about cryptid UFOs, the whole nine yards all the way up to East Coast. So it'll be a lot of fun oh, if you're interested yeah. in that. Um, numerous events coming up for both of us. Um, other than Ethereal Excursion, I'll, I'll be speaking at conferences around the country this year, as usual. Um, we'll be at Gettysburg Battlefield Bash and so many other ones. Just look on our stuff. You'll see all the places we're going to be. We'll be posting that here real shortly because I start mine, Jen's already doing stuff, but I start mine in uh, March. So we post all the time where we're going to be and what's going on. So we'll be at the uh, Bigfoot Camping Adventure in PA this year at Eric Altman's event and so many others. It's going to be a lot of fun this year. Big year again. Oh, uh, oh, and Halloween weekend at Octagon Hall. It'll be the weekend following Halloween. Um, November 1st and 2nd. We have Flatwoods Monster Convention uh, September 14th, I believe. Right, Dave? Yep, yep. Big, big stuff happening a lot. Oh, yeah. You've got a lot yeah, happening. Yeah, we've been on and I'll be at Moth Man Festival, of course. Again, every year there, no matter what. I don't think I'm speaking this year because there's they rotate us every two or three years now, so... Um, but I'll definitely have a table there selling my books and whatnot. But a lot of cool stuff coming. Yeah, I have questions on Mothman I need to ask you, Dave. Because I did a show recently, and I'm not satisfied with what I heard. So I need mm. to talk to you about it. Um, okay. Okay. Dave uh, has, a, has a new Mothman. Well, I am a West Virginia native, and I'm probably one of the most well-known people to talk about that topic. So. I know. I'm gonna give her a little only one that would probably be better than me on that is uh, Jeff Walmsley because he owns the Mothman Museum. So, <laughs> I mean, he's he's the man when it comes to the man. Yeah, uh, well. but I do know quite a bit. I've, I've actually got a book coming out later this year uh, that's called Beyond Mothman, and it's all about my investigations in Point Pleasant and the Mothman and, and many other topics up there. 
because that town is super crazy with everything. Yeah. Oh yeah, Dave. You there's you're the you're the one to ask about all this stuff because you're you're really knowledgeable. And so is Drew. I mean, Drew is a, an amazing, amazing, and and Jen. Oh my God, Jen. We are so lucky to have you. You can thank Dave for that. <laughs> Thank you, Dave, so much. <laughs> oh, my God, we love you guys. We love you guys. Um, Dave, we need to book a show. Just, you know, us. So, um, anyway, I'll get I'll get with you, Jen and Dave. We'll talk about another show. Drew has some unsolved uh, cases, he, he uh, missing people that he wants to talk about. I have some as well, and uh, probably some other kind of cases as well. Guys, thanks so much for being on the show tonight. Uh, it was, oh my God, you, you guys are awesome. I just thanks, love you guys. Thank you so much. You're my favorites. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Thanks. Okay. Bye. Love you. Nice Love Good you. Good night, guys. All right. Bye. Bye bye. Oh God. Let me go over here. Oh, that was great. Oh my God, I love them. Um, thanks so much, everybody, for joining the show. I'm so glad now. Um, I really didn't know what to expect about this case. I mean, I, I really didn't. I, I really thought maybe something paranormal happened to them and there was something chasing them, but now it all makes sense. It really does. I'm wondering how other people will feel about hearing this who have written books on the mystery of the Yuba uh, County Five. Um, but um, I'm satisfied. Uh, believe me, Jen. Jen is unbelievable. She's really, she's really. Uh, I believe everything she says. I've never come across anybody like her, and we, and I will have them back because I mean, Jen and Dave are, you know, they're my guys, and and Drew is just amazing. I mean, that he's just amazing. Anyway, so love you guys. Thank you so much. I it's been what two hours. Dave told me it was going to be a two hour show. Let me do some shout outs and then um, I'm going to go. Let's see the next show. Oh God, what's the next one? I think it's Steve Stockton. Um, oh, it's Steve Stockton. The next show is Steve Stockton and he is from the Appalachian area and in Tennessee and he has written book after book after disappearances um, and stories of the Appalachian Mountains and this book the story we're going to do is don't go in the woods and um, there's a couple of cases we're going to talk about and I'm excited about that and then the last show for March is um, the uh, uh, Killing Bender family. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. It's a family of five, and they were serial killers um, and from the 1800s in, um, God, I can't for I forget the state they were in. It was in the Old West. And um, um, the fellow that wrote that book, uh, Lee Ralph, Rolf, he wrote a book and he became interested in it and he has done extensive research on that family and there is a mystery to them. And he has, I bought the book, I started reading it and he had thing, he, he is re, he has documentation that nobody else has and he has things that he will, uh, I don't know if he'll reveal everything because of course he, he wants you to read the book, but he has, what you're seeing on the internet and what you're seeing on YouTube is the same, they're just repeating one another, but Lee Roth has the real, the real deal on documentation on this family. Because, um, Anyway, it's, just, it's, it's amazing, but what you're seeing on YouTube and on the internet is the same stuff. They're just repeating uh, each other, and uh, there are some things that I know he will not talk about because it's in the book, And um, but his information, I don't know how much he'll reveal. I, I'm hoping he'll reveal more than uh, and to let you know that 
there um, there is some stuff that's not true. Anyway, so those are the two shows for March, and uh, unless I can throw in an extra show uh, with Dave and um, and Jenny and and Drew too, I I really enjoy Drew. Anyway, so guys, let me do some shout outs. It's getting late. Um, I missed my basketball game, but it was worth it. So let me go back up here again. I want to thank my mods, Terry. Um, Chipper, Terry, Chipper, Terry, and uh, Renee, thank you so much. I love you guys. Thank you for always being here with me. Uh, I just love you guys. And my, and my, and my guy from um, Scotland, uh, Tall Cross. I he's just the deer, and he's he's really a truly, truly uh, good friend of mine now. I I just. He's always there for me. Okay, so let me do some shout outs. Renee, Valkyrie 1066, Tall Cross, Chippa Terry. Who's left in here? I think everybody's going now. It's been a long time. Oh, Patty Gimlin. Uh, she's the mod for um, Drew. Drew's uh, channel. You need to go over to do Drew's uh, channel. Um, it's really, he's got a great show and he's so. Um, what was his channel? Let me find this. Oh, yeah. It's Drew Beeson. It's the uh, true crime researcher. It's a, it's true crime and missing people. It, he's got a great channel. He is so... He's the guy for D.B. Cooper and the Zodiac. And, and, he, and, and on this case as well. So, um, let's see. Uh, so, hi, hi, Patty. So anyway, Patty's the uh, mod for uh, Drew's uh, uh, live shows. Sun Sun, Tammy Heitzman, Cat Daddy Steve. I hope you enjoyed the show tonight. I uh, hope to do more of these. I was so lucky to get Dave back. We used to do Ghost Box a lot. And like Dave said, I guess he got burnt out. But he's so good with the Ghost Box. Um, uh, let's see, anybody else left? Okay, I think everybody's going now. Thank you so much again for joining the show, and uh, please give the show a like if you if you if you liked them. I'd appreciate that. Aaron Brody, hi, Aaron. Um, anybody else? I think everybody else has left. Oh, Stacy Joe, seventy one. Anybody else? Want to shout out Mendy Allen? <sighs> oh, I don't know if you're still in the chat, Mendy, but they were found all over. A couple of two of the bodies were close to one another, but um, there was only five. Gary was missing, so and the other one, Ted Weir, he was in the trailer, so the other three scattered. Two of them were close together and the other one wasn't. And they found the bodies when the snow melted. Uh, Lynn Bowling. Hi, Lynn. I'm surprised a lot of you don't know the story. Planet X Filmworks. You think Gary went for help? I don't know. Because uh, they didn't come back until the snow melted. But that's a thought. I want to do some missing people. I'm curious about that Summer Wells. Summer Well or Summer Wells, I can't remember. Six years old. And Dennis Mort Martin was six years old as well who disappeared. Okay, I don't see anybody new. So I think I think I'm gonna go. Okay. Oh and Danny Rowling Ghostface. He's <laughs> as soon as I post a show up, he goes right into the chat. First one. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much everybody for joining me. I really appreciate it. Please don't forget to give the show a like. And and if you're new to the show, if you, if you like it, um, if you would please subscribe, I'd appreciate it. And I will see you. I don't have my calendar with me. Um, it'll be, it, it's always every other week. So in about another two weeks. Okay, I'll see you then. Thank you again. And um, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. Have a great weekend. Be safe. 
We're supposed to have a big storm coming in. Uh, it started raining, but it stopped, I believe. But um, it's this time of the year. Everybody, I love you. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. Love you.